Welcome everybody on Super Bowl Sunday, man. You ain't tripping. You ain't tripping. Man, football can wait, man. I'm, I'm ready to be in church today. Come on, who's excited to be in church today? Yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. I love church. I love you guys. I love this place. My name is Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I have the great privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church. And give it up for yourselves because you're worth it, everybody. Come on. We love celebrating around here. We love celebrating. I just want to take one moment and look directly into the camera and say, you are welcome here too. I'm so glad that you're tuning in online. I'm so glad that you decided to, to pop in today in the news feed. I want to let you know that this message is absolutely, I had you in mind when we were getting it ready and, um, and the Lord has something for you. And that goes for everybody. The Lord has something for you today. I don't know how you ended up here today. I'm not sure if your grandma invited you. You saw a billboard, but I'm going to tell you something that I say every single week. I believe it every single week. God has you here today for a reason. He has a message of hope, encouragement, and love that he wants to speak into your life today. And if you believe that with me, say amen. Amen, amen activates our faith. And basically is saying, let it be done, Lord. I, I want this to be a message of hope for me because I need a message of hope. Come on, anybody need a message of hope today? Anybody need some encouragement today? Anybody need some love today? Uh, amen. Well, you're, you are here right on time because this is a relationship series all about love. Somebody say love. It's about relationships. And you should love in your relationship, but it's not about that kind of love. You know, you settle. Last week, man, you guys were getting crazy on me, so I know I have to preface a lot of things right now. But before we get super into it, I want to invite Pastor Mark. Come on up here. Come on, give it up for Pastor Mark. I know what you're thinking. How can someone with a beard that big not be speaking every single week? We need to like, we need to play off that a little bit more. But uh, Mark has something he wants to share about the youth. So yeah, yeah. Go ahead. We're super excited to relaunch our Pulse Youth Group. It's kicking off this Thursday. Okay, it's going to be every Thursday from six to eight thirty. Okay, come on down. We're going to have food. We're going to have games. We're going to have fun. Okay, so all all you people who already knew about it, cool. Come on down. But if you never knew about it, we're going to have a good time, okay? So just come and see me or see Sierra Chano. Sierra, stand up real quick. There she is. Come on. Okay. Go ahead. Sierra. You're good. Come on. Stand on up. See one of us, and we'll tell you everything you need to know, okay? Answer all your questions, all right? Love you guys. Thank you so much. All right? This Thursday. This Thursday. Here. This Thursday. Right here. here. Right here. Okay? Ages 12 to? Until uh, you graduate. Till okay? you graduate. 12 right. till you graduate. Right. Man, no 21-year-olds, though. Just do more homework. It is that, is that, a, that's not a Chiefs jersey, is it? Oh, God, no. I was about to say, man, we're about to, we'll, we'll see you on the parking lot. They're streaming out there. Okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and one, one, one more quick thing, you know, because this is a relationship series, and so I want to, I want to just take a minute to honor all the relationships in my life. Most importantly, my wife, whose birthday is today. <laughs> You think you can all join me in something right here? Yeah. And we'll, we'll, we'll call her Pastor Tiffany, okay? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Tiffany. Happy birthday to you. I love you. I love you. Happy birthday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we, you are loved well. And so give her a, and, and online, can you just say happy birthday, Pastor Tiffany, online? I'd like for there to be like at least 50 comments. All right? Do it. Do it. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can do it now. And check in. You can do it here, too. But let's, without further ado, let's jump into today's message. I've put it off long enough, man, because this is, I've been so excited. I must have read about seven books getting ready for this series. Uh, one of them is right here. Um, it's called From This Day Forward. It's written by Craig Rochelle, and um, some, of the, some of the ideas I'm going to be sharing with you are straight out of this book. It's, it's so good. Rocked my world. Um, he's the pastor of Life Church out of Oklahoma, but they got like a bajillion campuses all over in different states, and so it's hard to say exactly where he's from. But he, he's got a great marriage going, as you can see from this book. So if you want to grab this resource online, I think I picked it up for like five bucks. You guys can grab it too. And it's one of the many books I read to get ready for this series, talking about, it's not you, finish the statement. Yeah, y'all know. You, who's heard that? 
to your face. Has anyone heard that to their face? I've heard that to my face before. I really have. But they didn't mean it. They was lying. It was all me. It was all me. Things were bad. Uh, So this series is kind of all about this. Your relationships all have one thing in common. You. All your relationships have one thing in common. You can write this in your notes, and we have it for you on the slide. All your relationships have one thing in common, and that's you. That's you. That means if you work on you, everybody gets better. You work on improving you, everybody wins. Man, that's a, that is a good strategy right there. And what made me think about this was this passage out of Matthew 7. Matthew 7, starting in verse 1. Now, I'm going to read a lot of verses to you, but Matthew 7, and it goes like this. Jesus said, do not judge others, and you will not be judged, for you will be treated as you treat others. The standard which you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. Now, that's scary because <laughs> I've done some judging in my time, all right? I've done some judging. I don't want to be judged like the way I judged some people before. And why do you worry about a speck in your friend's eye? So this is not just talking about marriage. It's not just talking about those interpersonal family relationships. It's talking about all relationships. Why are you worrying about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? This is my impression of a log right there, okay? You get it. You got a log in your eye. When you can't see past the log in your own eye. Hypocrite! One of Jesus' favorite words. I don't like that word. (laughs) Hypocrite. First get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. It's not you. Some of you get it. It's not you. I got a log in my eye. I got to take care of this. If I can take care of this log, I'll be able to see clearly to be able to deal with my relationships well. Verse 12 goes on to say this. Do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. Man, some some of y'all were waiting for that. Man, I've been reading the Old Testament, and it's like there's a lot in there. And Jesus is like, well, just, just get your pen out and write this down. Do to others what you would have them do to you. This is the essence of all of it. Thanks, Jesus. Where were you for like 3,000 years? I could have used your help making it more simple, right? Come on. Basically, the Bible is saying, stop trying to fix everybody else. It's a great place to say amen. Stop trying to fix everybody else in your life. In your, your, these relationships are an inside job. Man, we are so good at going, speck in your eye. Speck in your eye. Somebody listen to me online. I can hear you. Speck in your eye. There's a speck in your eye. Should have pushed mute. Speck in your eye. Speck in your eye. We're good at it. We're good at it. But what we need to be focused on is, no, 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 no. It's not you. It's me. I told you to get online and do that. Remember when I did that? And this applies. I told them to, it's it's me. What can I do to get better, to to help my relationships? We're going to look at all of our relationships in this series, our marriage relationships, parenting, dating, friendships, conflict, through the lens of what can I do? What can I change to make my relationships, and thus my life better? What can I do? Because you can't, you can't control what everybody else is doing. Try as you may. You can't control what your son or daughter is doing. You can't control what your spouse is doing. You can't control what your neighbor is doing, but you try. You can't control what, they're, you can't control what your coworker is doing. You can't control what your boss is doing. There's one person that you can deal with, and that's you. That's you. But I'm here to tell you, if you focus on you, if you focus on how you can improve, and I'm telling you, all of those relationships are going to get better. Yeah. One more time. Say amen with me to say, uh, Lord, I believe this, and I, and I need this in my life. I need this in my life. Next week, we're going to talk about dating. Next week, we're going to talk about dating. So wh- what I want to ask you is this. Do you know anybody who is dating, anybody wanting to date in a healthy way, anybody engaged, wanting to be engaged, maybe re-entering the dating scene after a long time? definitely bring anybody who is because this is going to be a game changer. I don't want you to miss next week when we're talking about dating. And plus, even if you're not in the dating scene, come on, wouldn't it be nice to to have some insight that you can share with some of these dating friends that you're looking at them going, you got to (laughs) stop. You you do something. You know, there's a speck in the old eye over there. Isn't that right? Some of these dating relationships that you know of outside over here, We want to have wisdom to be able to deal with that. So no matter who you are, this is going to apply to you. Don't think, oh, well, I'm married already. I don't need a message on dating. Believe me, it's going to be a benefit to everyone, to everyone. 
So we're all going to want to hear this advice. So today we're going to start with five keys to a healthy marriage. That's the title of today's message is five keys. I like things really simple. I like things really straightforward. So just tell me what the five things are so we can get going. Let me see. Let me just tell you that nobody has a perfect marriage or is uh, in a perfect relationship. There's always room for improvement. But let me tell you a scary stat on, on marriage, if you don't already know it. It's like 50-50. It's... It's like 50-50. And inside of the church, outside of the church, it makes no difference. There, there's a lot of room for, for good teaching. There's a lot of room for, for good encouragement. There's a lot of room for, to, to say, Lord, how can, we, how can we change that? How can we change this 50-50 this stat that we're seeing? It's like, man, I, don't, I just don't want that. I just don't want that. I wouldn't, I, I know it's a painful subject, so I'm not going to ask, you know, raise your hand if, no, 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 no. We're not going to do anything like that because you either are somebody or know somebody very close to you that has been affected by, by a separation of a covenant relationship, a separation of marriage. And you know what? If we can just get on the front end of this and we can just st start right, start today, start today. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean into some keys. I'm going to lean into some principles that are going to help me. Man, if you could just take this message into your heart, I'm just telling you, it could change everything. It could change everything. So, like I told you, it's from this book, and I'd love for all of you to own it at one point in your life and maybe skim through it. But I'm going to give you the cliff notes from today, a little bit of my own stories and a little bit of my own, a little bit of my own. And if you're not married today, let me just say that the, that same principle works for you. Like if you're dating or, or thinking about dating or wanting to date or wanting to get married this is the best time to hear this message because of that very stat. We want to we know these things, things I wish I knew before going in to marriage that I wish I understood. So number one, let's just jump right into this. Number one thing you want to do is seek God. In, in your marriage, we want to seek God because there's this tendency, um, it's even in our language, it's in our culture, everybody's looking for the one. Come on, somebody say the one. Oh, you're looking for the one, aren't you? We're all looking for the one, and every single romantic comedy has shown us that everybody has your the one out there. Oh, man, if I just found the one, if I just knew about the one. And if you're single, you probably memorized uh, Matthew 7, 7 through 8. Ask, and it will be given. Oh, Lord, I'm asking for the one. I'm asking for the one. You've memorized that. You say it to yourself every single day. Lord, I'm praying. If you said if I ask, then I'll receive. I'm praying for the one, the one, the one, the one. And that's true. There is, there is the one out there for you. There is the one out there for you. And if you're married, you probably uh, prayed this uh, verse slightly modified. Lord, I'm asking you that you would change my spouse into the person that I know they could be. Lord, I'm asking you to, you said if I asked and I can't, no, you, okay. So in one way or the other, we all kind of pray in that. Ask and it'll be given. Ask and I'll receive. But don't pray that prayer. At least don't pray in a way where they can hear you because that's not very nice. <laughs> that's not very nice. Usually when we think we found the one, it doesn't take long to find out that they weren't the one that we thought they were. Why are you laughing? Married people will be laughing right now. They weren't the one that we thought they were. Why? Because another person can never be your the one. When you meet someone godly and funny and charming and sweet and so hot, whew, so hot, who you really just met was your two. That's who you met, your number two. Lord, show me my two. Lord, I'm praying for my number two. I need my two. Because in order to be truly fulfilled in life, you have to meet the one, and that one is God. You have to seek God. You have to seek God. And he's your one. He's your the one. Man, if you, if you put anybody else in that place of being the one for you, you're going to be on track for a lot of hurting. Because that person is going to let you down. And that's speaking as a pretty good husband, if I don't say so myself. I, if Tiffany puts her hope and trust in me, that was, why, why are you laughing? That's not even a joke. I, I'm a good husband. Now he'll stop you all. Okay. I can't laugh. Matthew 22. Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And Matthew 6, says, seek the kingdom of God above all else. Above all else. He is your the one. 
He is the one. And live righteously. He will give you everything you need. In order to have a great marriage or great kids or any great relationship for that matter, we have to seek God first. We have to seek him first. We have to put him at the top. As we say at the end of every message, we want to put him at the top of our list. He's got to be at the top of my list. Because if I let Tiffany creep up to the top of the list, ooh, that's sweet. Give it time. Give it time. Give it time because she will let me down. And then where am I going to be? No, 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 no. God needs to be number one. I need to see God first in his kingdom. It's like we're all on a quest for happiness, but somehow we've all been convinced that we're going to find happiness outside of finding fulfillment in Jesus. And some of you know how futile that is because some of you tried. You keep on trying to find happiness, and people look at your life from the outside, and you got your stuff together, and you're always wearing a smile, but you know something missing. Something's missing. Sorry, when I really start feeling things, I leave out words and start talking like I'm from <laughs> Oakland or something. Those raiders really got to me. <laughs> we start thinking, like, if, if I just work a little harder at my job, if I just get another pay raise, if I just get, then maybe that thing on the inside of me that's empty will get filled. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, if I lean into my wife and, and really treat her and, and elevate her and just be the best husband I can be, then maybe that will give me some kind of satisfaction. Maybe, and, and women too, if I can just be the wife that my husband needs me to be, if I can just be the woman that, that my husband or my significant other needs me to be, then I'll be fulfilled. No, no, it will leave you hanging. This is what I want you to do. Write this in your notes. And this is kind of a statement for ourselves. This is an action step. This is what I want you to do. It says, I will seek the one with my two. That's how we want to live. We want, I will seek the one with my two. We're going to seek God together. And you are not my one. God is my one. You're my two, though. There is a proper order to that list. It's God, covenant spouse. It's the representation here on earth of what the relationship to God is supposed to be like. As, as, you know, as hard as that is, as humans, we can never really pull it off. But that kind of covenant, that kind of agreement where we're, it's not just a contract. It's like a blood covenant where I'm saying, I will, I'm here for you. I will always be here for you. But God's my one. And that's the only way it can work. And to, to seek the one with my two. To seek your one with your two means a couple things. It really means pursuing God together in a few different ways, like reading God's word together. Any one of these steps I'm going to tell you might help on your path to seeking your one with your two. Reading God's word together. Praying together. Somebody's like, oh my goodness, I cannot pray in front of people. I just can't. Man, just keep it simple. Just keep it simple. And this is a message I'm about to preach to myself right now. Some of you ought to just be starting slow. Start small, just a quick prayer. It doesn't have to be big. Just some, pray together. Read God's word together. Pray together. Worship together regularly in church. And that is not a shameless plug for this church. Maybe your church is somewhere else. Maybe you're from out of town. It doesn't matter. Seek the one with your two. And part of that is being in fellowship with other believers that are lifting you up, building you up. And we're doing this thing together. We're doing this thing together. We don't know how much that could do for our marriages. Be around people regularly who are following Jesus in a life group setting. In a life group setting. Man, where we can actually take the mask off and say, this is the real me. This is the real us. This is what we're dealing with, and we need godly people in our life. I need some godly people in my life that can hold me up, that can hold me accountable, that can pray for me about the real stuff, not just like, you know, the unspoken prayer. Anyone ever heard of the unspoken prayer? Now, we need a place where those prayers are spoken, okay? We need to get into a place like that. Unspoken prayers are fine, but they gotta, you got to have a place. Life groups are the place where that happens. And ask some friends to hold you accountable to grow spiritually together. Who's speaking into your life right now? I'm, you know I'm big on this if you've been coming around at all. I'm big on this. Who, who is in your life right now that can actually speak into your marriage? Who can say, hey, how much are you praying with your spouse? Hey, how much are you reading the Bible with your spouse? And then you have to tell the truth because they'll know. <laughs> Do you have anybody in your life like that? I encourage you. Seek the one with your two. Number one thing you want to do is seek God. Number two, number two, fight fair. Fight fair. Notice I didn't say don't fight. <laughs> 
that's a joke. You can laugh. That's a, you can laugh because, man, that's just, that would be dumb. That would be dumb if I was talking like that. Fight fair, though. Fight fair. What does that mean? Newsflash. All couples fight, but unhealthy couples fight dirty. Don't fight dirty. Don't fight dirty. Below the belt jabs, sucker punches, grudges. Unhealthy couples fight to be right. They fight for victory over one another. But healthy couples fight for resolution. It's really just in your, what's my goal here? Do I want to resolve this issue or do I just want to be right? Do I just want to like, see, it wasn't my night to take out the trash. Uh, no, no. We want to get on the solution side. And that's what fighting fair looks like, is we're fighting for resolution. I believe if a couple could learn this one thing, it, it, could, say, it could save you. This, just this one point by itself could be enough to save you. And one of the Bible writers named James, who is the brother of Jesus, helps us immensely when he says this in James. Chapter 1, starting in verse 19, he says, Understand this, my brothers and sisters, you must all be Say it with me. Quick. Quick to listen. Slow to speak. We can just stop right there. Because that's, that's really what I think it boils down to. Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. But often we do the opposite, don't we? We do the opposite. Man, instead of being quick to listen, I'd be like, nope. La, 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 la. I'm not listening to you because you're wrong. And I'm not going to listen. No, we need to be quick to listen, but what happens usually is we're slow. We stop listening because we don't want, because we're trying to be right. And if I keep listening to you, I might actually understand you, and you might actually have something that is helpful to the situation. I don't want to hear that. Mm. And it says what? It says be, be slow to speak, but that's not what we do, is it? No, 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 and another thing, and another thing I don't like, and then another, and we, we want to talk over each other. That's fighting dirty. That's fighting dirty, is stop listening, and I'm going to talk over you until you hear what I have to say. It was Stephen Covey who wrote who in, in, his, in his book, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It sounds a lot more gimmicky than it really is. It's actually a great read. I recommend it to everyone. He says this, we must listen to understand. Seek first to understand is, is one of the habits. We need to listen so that we understand. I want to hear you. What's really bothering you about this? What is it? Is it just that I forgot to take out the trash? Man, I'm really harping on that trash thing. I'm sorry, honey. I'm sorry. I think there's a full garbage can at home right now. And it's my fault. <laughs> my fault. We want to be quick to listen. Quick to listen, but we often do the opposite. So in this point of fighting fair, this is kind of what I want you to understand. This is your application point. I want you to write this in your notes. Predefine your rules for engagement. You, you should have some things that are off limits and some, and some things that are your rules. Now, there's some universal rules I'm going to share with you, but each, uh, each couple is a little bit different. There's going to be things that um, maybe as a wife, you're saying, never talk about this. It always hurts me. It never helps me. So not in the heat of the moment. You want to predefine those rules. And maybe as a husband, you say, never, never bring this up. It is always a stab in my heart. It always hurts me, so please don't do that. You want to predefine your rules for engagement and stick to it. Some universal rules, if you're taking notes and you want to have some things to go off of, some things might help you are right here. Um, I don't have them on the screens for you, so just listen up, I guess. Never call names. How about that? <laughs> That's a good one, isn't it? That's a pretty good rule. Never call names. Just never go there. And even the subtle names. I can't think of any right now, but you know the ones, the ones that aren't like dirty, but they're kind of like pet names used against each other. All right, dummy. All right. Um, oh, you're special, you know, or saying things that have that undertone of it. Never call names. Ne never call names. That's, that's one. Um, number two could be never raise your voice. Never raise your voice. And some of you are like, I'm out. I'm out. This message is not for me. I, cannot, I can't even do that. I'm raising my voice right now. So that's not going to work. So it, maybe you love to raise your voice. Maybe you're an Italian family and uh, you just love to talk like that. Or, or maybe your spouse has a different idea than you do. 
about what's acceptable. Really, it's important to them. What's important to them needs to be heard by you. So never raising your voice, good one. Uh, another one is never get historical. Not hysterical, historical. Historical. Well, you, you, man, remember when you didn't take out the trash that one time? Remember last week when you didn't take out the trash? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I knew it. I knew you were going to. Historical. Histor getting historical rarely, if never, helps anything. Because you just, you just re recounting the sins of the past. Who is that? Who are you really trying to help? You're trying to win is what you're doing. You're trying to win if that's you. Um, how about this one? Never say never or always. Never say, you never take out the garbage on time. Really? You always forget to take out the garbage. Man, I take out the garbage on time one time. That's not true. So using absolutes, this is, I am terrible at this. <laughs> I love absolutes. They just roll right off the tongue. I don't know what, man, you never do that. You, you always say that. No, she doesn't always say that. But, but think about what that communicates. Man, I believe you will always do that. And you have net, no, let's just, how about we just leave that out? How about we just leave those items off the table? How about we just try that? Try that. Um, this one's really important. Um, never threaten divorce. Never threaten divorce. Now, some of you um, may have grown up in a family where that was like common or, or maybe it's just like something. Um, but I want to tell you how, how powerful that can be. Um, it's, it's like it would be like a child saying, I'm, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave if you do this. And even if it's said like softly, even if it's said, well, you know, we're just, mm -mm, there's really no great way for me to talk about this one. But how about we just leave it out? Tiffany did a really wise thing when we were engaged and we were doing our pre-marital counseling. She just told me. And you know, when you're engaged, there ain't nothing that's going wrong. Everything's right. You're beautiful. You're lovely. Everything you say is true. But that's the, that's the idea of predefining. That's the idea of predefining the rules of engagement. When you say something and, and establish some rules not in the heat of the moment, they have a better ability of sticking they have a better ability of working out. And she said to me when we were going through our counseling and, and, and engaged, she said, just don't ever do that. Just don't, don't ever even say it. Don't ever talk about it because it's not on the table for me. I know it's not on the table for you. So let's just not even go there. Let's not talk about it. Um, and by God's grace, by God's grace, I, I haven't gone there. You know, and she hasn't gone there. We haven't gone there. We just don't we don't even talk about it because we don't even want to, we don't want to bring that word into our home. We don't want to bring that word into our home because the stakes are high. The stakes are high. And when we begin speaking certain things, they get more real as time goes on. They get more real as time goes on. Now, if you've ever stumbled on any one of these, this is not a time for condemnation. This is not a time for anyone to feel like they're, you're guilty and you're wrong. This is great news because now we, we can begin to change. We can begin to to say in the, not in the heat of the moment, in a, in a calm time, well, honey, let's, let's, let's predefine some things. And, and I was thinking about some things today. Maybe you can go home or maybe don't elbow each other right now. Um, but, you know, we're not going to do that. How about let's not do this? How about let's not do that? And, and the last one, never quote your pastor during a fight. <laughs> well, Elliot said you ought to, no, 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 no. You got yourself into this, you get yourself out. That's, that's all I got to say on that. Okay, number three. Number three, let's, let's pick it up a bit. Have fun. Number three is have fun. We got to remember to have fun with each other. Boys, this one's for you. But ladies, it's for you too. But I'm going to explain it. Um, but men especially, guys. Uh, uh, when I was dating Tiffany uh, and when we were engaged, man, we had fun. And I was always coming up with new ways to wow her. And I would, come on, let's just go on a walk. And we got like the, the Starbucks and we was walking and it was Christmassy time. So we were looking at the lights and it was so, I, I was romantic back then. Why are you laughing? Why you, I, heard, I heard that. I was waiting for that. You're all like, mm, and... But there's something about the nature of a man. What, we're hunters. <sighs> hunters. Mm, oh, I mm, hunt. I hunt and I need my deer. Here, there's my deer. And when we go, and we get the deer, and then what do we do? 
we cut its head off, stuff it, put it on our wall, and move on. There's, a, there's something inside of our nature, men, that once you seal the deal, man, I'm good. I, I got this one. Now I'm going to go on to another adventure. That will ruin your marriage. <laughs> Sorry. Guys, that's going to ruin your marriage. What we need to do, and I'm preaching to myself because this is not something that comes natural to me. Like, I just... I was so sweet. I proposed to Tiffany on a hot air balloon. Come on, somebody. Nailed it. That's right. Like, I went for it. I went all out. Have we gone on a balloon ride since then? Uh, not even close. <laughs> I feel like I'm on a hot air balloon right now. Mm. You know, but ladies, too. Ladies, too. Look, there's a way for you to invite fun into your marriage without being like, you know, the deer is sitting there and it's like, you don't have to hide in the bushes that much, okay? You can be like, here I am. You can do a little bit more of that. Ecclesiastes, man, I'm really going for it today. These days have been hard. <sighs> okay, Ecclesiastes 9.9 9 says, live happily with the woman you love through all the, through all the meaningless days of your life. <laughs> Man, that's another message for another day, I think. We're going to go into that later. The wife God gives you is your reward for all your earthly toil. And that is not a reward that goes away. That's your reward continually. You get to continue. That's your continual enjoyment, man, is to continue to pursue your wife. Have fun for crying out loud. How bad could it be to get out and have some fun? Not one and done reward. It's a daily reward. Martin Luther uh, said it like this. He said, let the wife make the husband glad to come home and let him make her sorry to see him leave. Isn't that sweet? Martin Luther, you old, you old guy, you, you got some wisdom in you, don't you? I see Martin Luther with his like little white wig. I probably didn't. That's how I picture him anyways, but he was pretty smart. That's a because that's a daily practice we can attain. That's something that every day we can think about. Is my wife sorry to see me leave the house? Because I'm pursuing her every day. And and wives, is, is my husband glad to come home? Because I'm like, here I am. <laughs> Man, lifeline, come on, bring reel it in. Reel it in. All right, here's your to-do. Here's your to-do. Um, this is, uh, could be insanely simple for some of you, but um, let's just call it the way it is. Commit to a date night. Commit to a, a regular date night. Not just like whenever we get around to it, date night. Not like, I, I don't care if you've been married a week. I don't care if you've been married 35 years. This. 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 And guys, if you love a challenge, then keeping this spicy is all you, buddy, all you, all right? Just think like you're the, you're the 49ers, and you're like, gonna, oh, I'm going to beat this date night to the ground. Yeah, I'm going to crush it. Guys, you can do this. You, you can do this. Men, let's step up a little bit. Let's step up, not just when you're dating, not just when things are sweet, not just in your first year of marriage. Come on, everybody. You know what it's like. If you married, that first year is like, it doesn't even count. Doesn't even count. After that, this, this is so crucial. Commit to a regular date night. I'm I'm you're going to have to invest your money. You have to make a special envelope just for this. Dave Ramsey, come on. Where y'all at? Where are my Dave Ramsey people at? You need, a, you need an envelope for this. I understand the difficulties. Maybe you have a 24-7 job. I understand that. Maybe you have a job that just can call you anytime. You have a 24-7 job. Or maybe you have a three- and four-year-old toddlers whose jobs are to make sure that you can't do anything around them. I just described my life to you. A 24-7 job with a three- and a four-year-old toddler that are like, no, you ain't going nowhere. You are going nowhere. You're staying home, and you're going to play blocks with me. And if you don't like it, I'm going to scream. That's all there is to it. I, I get it. This is tough. This is hard work. But let's make it exciting. Guys, make it exciting. 
I'm talking to you, men. Make it exciting. And ladies, don't make it too hard. Don't make it too hard for him. Man, make yourself, make yourself available. Don't make him guess what it is that you want to do. He can't. He cannot. He doesn't know. All right? Go easy on the guy. He doesn't know what he's doing. Come on, somebody start to applaud me. No, take it easy. <laughs> oh, guys, you got, <laughs> some guys are like going to stand up and start clapping. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, but ladies, you know, you can... You can make it a little easier, you know. Don't be like, well, if you can find me, then you can have me. No, 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 no. Make yourself, make yourself available so he doesn't have to, you know. Mm. And decide in advance. This is something that we had to do. Um, decide in advance what not to talk about during dates. Uh, for us, it's work because we work together. And so one thing that we do not, I had to learn this the hard way. I would be like, oh, man, we just, we can talk about anything, right? And she's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure we can. No, we cannot. We, we know what we do on our dates and what we don't talk about on our dates. You don't have to talk about your kids on your dates. You don't have to talk about work on your dates. Check in with your spouse. See what they don't like talking about on their dates. And don't go there. You ruin the whole thing. Man, you bought the tickets, went on the hot air balloon ride, and you start talking about work. Man, you might as well just jump off right now. You didn't work. You blew it. Messed the whole thing up. You have to get creative, guys. Man, you can get creative. I know you guys can do it. You got to get creative on this one, okay? It's supposed to be like when you were dating. You remember that? Remember how long ago that was? When you were dating. Take that in. Take that into your marriage and continue, continue that kind of pursuit, that kind of excitement. Number four is this. Stay pure. Stay pure. Oh, oh boy. It, uh, well... Let's get down to it, shall we? It's become too easy these days to pollute our minds, even while we're married. On top of that, the American culture has taught us, to find, uh, taught us that finding a spouse is like shopping for a car. You wouldn't buy a car without taking it for a test drive, would you? You ever heard that one? <laughs> you ever heard that? That's so stupid. <laughs> That's a, oh, a person is a car now? No. No, a person is not a car, and you do not have to take them for a test drive. Man, we, we got to fight for this because this is so countercultural. It's so different, but we're try I'm trying to set you up for success. I want your marriage to work. I want your marriage to go the long haul. You do not need to take them on a test drive. Don't do that. Your wife is not a Buick, man. That's not it. Someone said amen. That's right. So many jokes I could tell right now. I'm not going to tell any of them. <laughs> but we've bought into that lie. Uh, when we buy into that lie, we're really practicing for divorce. Because the, the culture around us would say, you know, you just need to keep on trying out new, a new model. You know, I'm going to try out the Ford Focus. I'm going to try out the, the Prius. I'm going to try out the Buick. And I'm gonna, I'm, until I find something I like, and then I'm going to keep it. Really? What you're used to now is whenever things get hard or whenever, the, is there anything that I don't like, I just bounce. Now, this is a little crazy, but um, in my past, when I was using and rock and roll and playing in bands, I had never been faithful to anyone in my whole life. Never. Not even one person. But God changed me. He changed me from the inside out. And that's something I treasure going into to my new marriage, to my, my only marriage, that that Tiffany is the, is the only person I've ever been faithful to, and, and the years are going by, and nothing's going to change. Because God can make you new, even if you're not perfect on this subject. I feel like you could be feeling a lot of condemnation right now, because maybe you haven't kept that marriage bed pure. Let me just tell you, Jesus can restore you. He can, he can wipe away that black muck. He can wipe, wipe away those mistakes, those issues, those hurts, the things that happened to you, the things you've done to others. He can make you new. He really can. And you can start fresh today. Today you can start fresh. And he can renew you. That's why it says white as snow. He make you white as snow. That's why the, 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 the wife would wear a nice glaring white wedding dress because it represents I'm giving my pure self to you. And even if you had some mistakes, let me just tell you, Jesus can restore that. Bible talks about it. Make you white as snow. White as snow. What I want to tell you is... Uh, 
um, even small things can creep in. Small things can creep in, into your marriage, into your uh, singleness. Small things can, can, can come in. I heard the story once about a young girl who, uh, who wanted to have a sleepover with her friends. And she was, uh, you know, a 13-year-old girl, so she got a lot of little close friends, and they wanted to have a sleepover. And they're asking dad, daddy, 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 can we watch this one movie? But dad knew this one movie had like a little bit of, you know, a little bit of nudity and a little bit of cussing. And it was just like, well, it's, you know, honey, I don't think that's a very good movie for you guys to be watching. And they said, oh, but dad, but dad, I really want to. Dad, please, please, can I watch it? Oh, I really want to watch it. And he's like, oh, oh, uh. Fine, 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 fine. And so the girls all come over. They're having a sleepover. They're sitting in the living room. They're about to turn it on. And, and dad starts making some brownies. He starts making some brownies. And he, he, he brings them out, gets it all ready, brings it out to the girls and says, hey, girls, uh, I made you guys some brownies. Oh, yeah, brownies. Ooh, dad, you're so awesome. Now, he said, now, ladies, I want to just, there's just, there's just a little bit of dog poop in them. Just, a, just not very much, okay? Just a little tiny bit. Just a little pinch of dog, of dog poop inside of your brownie. Now, ew, dad, you're so gross. Now, we have no problem letting little tiny bits of impurity into our mind, into our eyes, into our heart, storing it up in there. But when it comes to what we're eating, what we're taking into our stomachs, oh, no, never. Oh, there's a little tiny hair. Can't have it. But when we're on Facebook, Instagram, on the internet, Watching TV, oh, just a little bit, not, not, not going to hurt nobody. You tell me what's more important, eating a hair or having that, your heart all jacked up. Here's the, here's the takeaway. Kill impurities before they take root. Kill impurities before they take root. Now, I, like I told you, I have a very impure past, but we all have a sin nature. All of us. All of us. I'm not special in that. Y'all have it, too. We all have it together. So it can feel like we have no control when in fact we do. We do have control. We can control what comes in. What it comes down to is prevention. Prevention when it comes to staying pure. And Proverbs 4 says this, look straight ahead. Fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path and don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. And it says look straight ahead. Let's talk about putting some blinders on, man. Like you can't even drive down uh, airport way without being like, mm, burp, leave my eyes straight ahead of me. So you know what I'm talking about. It's like, oh, I can't even look. Blinders. We need blinders on. We need to say, oh, let my eyes just bounce from that. And we need to mark out a, pl it says right here, mark out a straight path. That is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to direct my own steps. I'm going to look, I'm going to create a path where I'm going to work. I don't have to go down that road on my way to work. I go down another road. So Bounce your eyes. Go down a different path that's not by temptation. Man, maybe there's a coworker at work, and every time you need to go to the water cooler, you walk right by her, and she's like, oh, hey. You're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> go Walk a different way. Bring a water bottle. You know what I'm saying? Do something. Like, plan ahead. I'm going to stay pure by not walking by her. Well, it's just, I'm just walking by. I'm just saying hi. You know, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal because small things turn into big things. Little tiny things turn into bigger things when they take root. Let's talk about this last one. Number five, never give up. Never give up. This is what I want to close with today. Never give up. Now, I, I just feel it. I, I feel like some of us here have just been, we've been through a lot in marriages. And, and a message like this has potential to make us feel like I've done too much. I've gone too far. I, I, man, I've already given up once. I already walked away from something once. Is there any hope for me? What are you trying to say to me? And I've met a lot of people, a lot of people as a pastor when they come and they say, well, well, what do you feel about this? And they're talking about marriage. And I'm like, Man, can Jesus just make you new? I believe he can. I believe he can make us new. But what I am saying is this. It's not too late for you. It's not too late for you in your marriage. It's not too late for you, for your husband and for your wife, for you to be madly in love with each other, for you to be restored to fullness, for you to be starting fresh. Maybe it just feels like there's just no way there's just no way. I want you to decide 
in advance. I'm, I'm not going to give up. I've made a covenant with this bro. I'm not going to give up. But on the other side of that coin, God can make you new. God can make you new. When we know that quitting is never an option, it creates safety and makes us think through what we must do to make things work. But when, but when we always have this back door open in our mind, we start to lean into that. What I want to tell you today that even if things are hard, even if things are difficult, Jesus can do a lot in a little bit of time if we just let him in. I want to read you this passage right here, Matthew 19, and I hope it really speaks to, to you. It says this, some Pharisees came and tried to trap Jesus, him, with this question. Should a man be allowed to divorce his wife for just any reason? He said, haven't you read the scriptures? Jesus replied, they record that from the beginning, God made them male and female. And he said, this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife. And the two are united as one. Say united as one. Since they are no longer two but one, let no one split apart what God has joined together. And, but then they say this, and this is the question that we tend to ask. But then why did Moses say in his law? Why, why does it seem like there is certain things that kind of can, can draw us out? Why did Moses say in the law that, that a man could give his wife a written notice of divorce and send her away? They asked, uh, and then Jesus replied, Moses permitted divorce only as a concession to your hard hearts, but it was not what God had originally intended. Now listen, what God originally intended was a world free from sin, and that's blown that's gone. That's, that's not what, we will never have that, this side of heaven. Until we go home, until Jesus calls us back, until we get, you know, hit by that bus later in life, whatever it is, until then, we're going to have to deal with sin. We're going to have to deal with pain. We're going to have to deal, because Jesus said, this is not what God had originally intended. That's a small statement that says a lot. God didn't intend a lot of things. Now, I've heard all the reasons, and it may feel like, like just ending it is justified or the right thing to do, but in my humble opinion, there's something that Jesus speaks to in this, and they were talking about a very specific thing, but the good thing about the Bible, it's, it's living, it's active, it's spirit-inspired writings written by men, inspired by the Spirit. That means it continues to have application and there's ways that we can continue to read it, even in our current context. Our context is nothing like what they were going through at the time. Similar, but not really. They were asking about, because women were just more like property back then. It was just way different than it is now. But let me just tell you, this still speaks to something, to us. What I want to zero in on is the hard hearts. God gave that as a concession to hard hearts, but it's never what God intended. Now, maybe it's not your heart that grew cold. Maybe it's someone else's. Maybe it's something that happened. But in my humble opinion, I cannot go to sleep tonight. I can't rest well if I don't tell you this. In my personal opinion from, from reading the scriptures is that there's only really one good reason for divorce, and that's abuse. If there's continued abuse, physical, mental abuse, where there's unrepentance and there's just a refusal to change, that's hard hearts. It's a concession for hard hearts and it doesn't have to be yours. It might be theirs. I'm, I'm only pulling that from the scriptures because I'm not gonna tell uh, someone to stay in an abusive relationship when, when really what you need is, is, is your physical safety. And so, but there's, a, there's so many times where we've been told or been taught, you know, no matter what, no matter what, you know, you just got to subject yourself to it. And there's, there's really no, there's no compassion there. There's no thought. It's really not even true to the biblical text. But what I want to share with you is, is that it doesn't have to be that way. Outside of, outside of that, what I want us to do is commit to, commit to never giving up. This is something I'll fight for. This is something I will, I will go to the very, very as, mu as far as I can go, because this is not something that I'm just going to step away from. Now, that's, now, some of you might take issue with that, and that's okay. That's okay. 
God only called me to do my best. He only he called me to listen to his voice and share that with you. And so you can, you can take that for what it's worth. But from me, I, I want you to be safe and, I, and I, want you to, I want you to do everything you can possibly can to make marriage, your marriage work. Make your marriage work. So this is what I want you to do. Decide in advance to never give up. What was recited in your vows, let that ring in your ears for all of your lives together, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, which is a lot like the way God treats us, isn't it? <laughs> we have a picture of this. In fact, when things are at their worst, it seems like God is at his strongest with us. Romans 8 says this, and I just love this because it's for knuckleheads like me. What shall we say about such wonderful things? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? You know, God just dropped this in my heart this morning. I'm so sorry I don't have it on the screens for you, but just listen. Listen. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake we're killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, angels nor demons, neither our fears of the day or our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky or on the earth below, indeed nothing in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Come on, somebody, can I get an amen on that? Because that's the kind of love we're dying to have. That's the kind of love we all desire to have. And we're only going to get that truly from one place. From him. I'll seek the one with my two. I will seek the one with my two. No matter how you feel about him, this is how he feels about you. If you can grasp this, it will change everything. No. If you can accept this, it'll change everything. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes with me. So we pray. So I just think that some, some people got their hearts shaken a little bit today. Maybe you had some, something in your mind that was standing in your way, but that's being shaken loose today. And I want to give an opportunity to every single person here where he hasn't been your one. Maybe he's been your two or your three or your four, or maybe he's not even on there at all. But you know something's missing or you know God, you're not where you should be with the Lord right now. So for every group of people, if, if God's not even on your list, if you've never made a commitment to him before, I want to give you this opportunity to, to put him at the top of your list and say, Jesus, I make you my Savior and I make you my Lord. And for those of you who, who would say, I know I'm not where I should be with him. He used to be number one, and that was amazing. But some, life happened along the way, and he got moved down. He didn't move, I did. So I want to give the invitation to every single person to put Jesus at the top of your list today, right where he belongs, as your number one. So if I described you in any way, and you're ready to put Jesus at the top of your list, just lift your hand to him and say, God, I'm here. Amen. I see you right there. Amen. I see you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. Yes, I see you too. And God sees you most importantly. He sees you. Let's put our hands back down. Thank you so much. Amen. I see you too. I see you too. Nobody praying alone today. Let's, let's make this prayer loud and confident. And this is, this is my declaration to him. So let's pray this together. Say, Father God, I give my life to you. I give my heart to you. Forgive me of my sins and make me new. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for all of my sins so I don't have to. Fill me with your spirit and make me new and show me the path where I should walk. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, you know what to do. It's time to celebrate.